<clears throat> All right. Guys, give me some feedback about if you like stories or not. I went back to the other books. This one. Gonna read one about the little dragon. I thought it might be cute. Probably too young for the big guys, but anyway, there you got it. Maybe it'll put you to sleep. All right, the little dragon learns to fly. Long, long ago, a fierce dragon lived in the mountain cave above a village named Dragonia. Nobody had actually seen the dragon, but many people had seen the hot flames of dragon's breath that poured from the cave and anybody went too close. Oh. One day, a little boy named Jake was picking wildflowers near the cave when he stumbled his toe on what looked, what looked like a rock. Ouch, said the rock, which jumped up and hit behind the bigger rock. It gave Jake quite a shock. It wasn't a rock after all. I was having a n -n -n nap, complained the frightened voice. Who are you, asked Jake. I am the, 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 the dragon, and if you d -d don't go away, I shall b b breathe fire all over you, started the voice after a pause and added, Are you big? I'm bigger than my brother, said Jake. I'm seven. A green head with nobles, pointed ears, and a nostril on stalks. Hey, <laughs> that's funny. Peered around the rock. That's funny, said the dragon. I'm seven as well. He came out from behind the rock. He was surprisingly small for a dragon. In fact, he was no taller than Jake. With stumpy wings on his back, no bigger than Jake's hand. Can you fly? asked Jake. I've never tried, said the dragon. Never, gasped Jake. No, never. The very idea of flying made him tremble. Now please go away and don't tell anyone I'm only a small dragon or people will start poking about in my cave and frighten me. He disappeared out of sight. Now look at this. I said, pointy ears and nostrils on stalks. Look at his nose. Yes, honey. <laughs> They're really nostrils on stalks. That's cute. I need one of those. I need a dragon. By the time Jake reached the village, he was busting to t burst, not busting, bursting, to tell someone about the little dragon. But he remembered how scared he had been and decided not to. And that would have been that. But the village has been so poor that they held a meeting to decide how to get rich. I know, suggested the butcher. Let's get a knight to slay the dragon and charge money for people to watch. Cold sport. That was the days when people did that sort of thing, and so the villagers agreed, and it was a brilliant idea. They invited the local knight to fight the dragon. You should have seen the crowd that turned up. They all cheered like mad when the knight set off to the mountain. Jake did not see him go. He was already scurrying up the mountain to warn the dragon. Because he was in such a hurry, he didn't look where he was going and slip. Ah, he cried as he hurled helter-skelter down the mountain. He landed with a bump on the narrow ledge. Help, help, he called, but nobody heard except the dragon who was soon peering down at him. Help me, begged Jake. What, asked the dragon, who was quaking with fear. How can I possibly help? Couldn't you flap your wings and fly to rescue me, asked Jake. Don't be silly. I've never flown in my life, replied the dragon. But pleaded Jake, I was climbing up the mountain to warn you that the night is coming to kill you. Oh, said the dragon, I'm off. Poor Jake, he was frightened he couldn't help, help but cry. The dragon, who hadn't gone very far, knew a great deal about crying. He was very lonely, being a dragon, and living on his own, he cried a lot. Please don't cry, he said, peering down at Jake again. But I might die. Oh dear, 
Couldn't you climb back up? No, sobbed Jag. I don't believe you tried, said the dragon crossly. And he stamped his foot so hard that the ground beneath him began to crumble and he began, began to fall. Well, that wasn't very smart. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you get from getting pissy. All right. Whoa, he cried as he hurled down the mountain. Oh, he yelled, whizzing past the narrow ledge where Jake sat. Flap your wings and fly, yelled Jake. Oh, sobbed the dragon. Fly, begged Jake. Goodness knows what made the little dragon twitch his wings, but something did. The next moment he was actually flying. Look, look, I can fly, he gasped, swooping up Jake from the ledge and flop, flop, flopping the, to the top of the mountain. How about that, he laughed, dropping Jake, not very gently, to at the mouth of the dragon's cave. Oh, there you are, panted a voice. It was the night. He was out of breath from hurrying up the mountain in his heavy suit of armor. Please don't kill me, said the dragon. The, uh, no, please don't kill the dragon, begged Jake. <laughs> yes, please don't kill me, quaked the dragon. I wouldn't dream of it, exclaimed the knight. Why, wow, I saw this brave dragon throw himself off the mountain. Hehe, <laughs> you fail. It was just so he could fly to your rescue. It was one of the bravest things I've ever seen. He didn't know he was just by accident. Which is why the knight told the village what the knight told the villagers when he brought Jake down the mountain. The villagers were so pleased that they threw a special feast in honor of the little dragon. They were dancing and singing, sandwiches and cake, lots and lots of drink. Everybody had a splendid time. Including the little dragon, who Jake managed to persuade to join them. The little dragon had made so many friends that he couldn't remember all the names. He'd, he'd never been so happy. Indeed, he was so happy he decided to share his treasures with all the villagers, for I'm sure you know dragons guard over a horde of treasures. And so the villagers were no longer poor, and the dragon was no longer lonely, and everybody lived happily ever after. Go figure! <laughs> <laughs> the cute little story. I want a dragon. One that size. It's probably the size of Andrew. I'm sure. Could stick him out in the yard. Could play with the uh, scout. Run around. Yeah. Alright guys. Let me know if you like this story. There's a couple more that are not your typical. Uh, there's a mermaid story in here. And Trouble with Finley. I don't know what that's about. There's a pirate story in here. Little Red Riding Hood. Well, we all know that one. Golden Goose. We know that one. The Frog Prince. You guys have heard the Frog Prince? Oh, yeah. It's a Disney story now. Sophie in the Toy Land. So there's a couple of good stories. Let me know what you guys think. Okay? And oh, what you don't think. Or I'll stop. So I could be doing something else. Let me know. Or you could read me a story. That'd be cool too. I'd love that. Or I could play some. You can watch me play with something. <laughs> I think that would be funny. Andrew likes to do that. Anyway. Love you kids. Have a good one. Bye bye.